Welcome to Talking Heads on USA Global TV, starring the one and only wonderful Dr. Jacqueline. It's a prestigious place where world-class influencers and experts meet, and where you'll find the most trusted advisors and coaches for all things in life and business. Visit usaglobaltv.com to sign up for our newsletter, get the value you need, and be first in line to learn about events and giveaways and other valuable content. Connect with us. Email Dr. Jacqueline at usaglobaltv.com to talk about how you can become part of USA Global TV. That's USA Global TV, where the doctor is always in. Hello, everyone, and welcome to USA Global TV and radio. I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck, and our show today is The Wise Ones. My co-host and friend, Mr. Red O'Loughlin, is not able to join us today. He has the day off, so we wish him well. Our topic today with our guest is really quite interesting and something that applies to each and every one of us, whatever your background is, wherever you live in the world, whatever you're going through, we're going to be talking about confidence, self-esteem, and that negative self-talk that we just literally beat ourselves up all the time. And here to share her expertise and wisdom, she's a confidence expert. She also has a uh, been a number one best-selling author internationally, not once, not twice, not three, not four, eight times, which is amazing in and of itself. As an author myself, I know how hard that is. And she's also the 2021 Canadian Presenter of the Year. Let's welcome to this show, welcome back, she was on one of our other shows, Natalie Plamdon Thomas. Hello. Hey, Dr. Jacqueline, I'm so happy to be back on your show. You're such a great host. I can't wait for our chat again. Oh, thank you so much. And just to remind people, you're joining us from Canada. I am. Yeah, I'm on the West Coast of Canada. Yes. Fantastic. Well, I always love when someone comes to visit us and then they come back again because there's there's not enough time in one show to really get through what we need to discuss. And the topic that you are an expert in applies to everyone. So tell us how and when you started this journey about learning about confidence and deciding to take the step forward to help other people with theirs. So um, I um, I remember um, when I started my speaking business, I, I had this negative self-talk in my head telling me that uh, I was not going to be good enough, right? So uh, I'm French-Canadian, so I come from uh, the east coast of Canada, and then that negative self-talk in my head was telling me, what? you want to become a professional speaker like in English? You don't even speak English. You want to write books in English? It's never going to work. You're not good enough. And, and that negative self-talk does not help anyone. And we all have that. In fact, research shows that 70% of our thoughts are negative. We wouldn't have any friends if we talked to them the same way we talk to ourselves. Like we don't walk around telling people, oh, hi. Oh, you look really fat in these jeans. Oh, you're starting a business? No, nah, it's never going to work. You're not good enough. But we say these things to ourselves all the time. And I remember uh, telling you the story last time. And I think I'm going to use a different story to tell you how mindset makes a big difference and how the way we talk to ourselves makes a huge difference depending on the events that are happening to us. So it doesn't matter what is happening on the outside world. What matters is how we respond to it. So here's the story. I was um, teaching fitness and uh, at the gym where I was teaching, um, we were introducing a new dance program. And that um, dance program was going to come on the schedule. So we had to do a presentation in front of 100 other instructors and members. So, so maybe a 300 people crowd. So um, we put a group together to present this new dance program. But at the gym, I was teaching very high intensity classes, weightlifting, hardcore stuff. Nobody knew that I actually had a dance background. So I was very confident in my dancing skills, but nobody knew about that. So we start that presentation on that day. And I was not front and center. I was way off to the side. And I see all the heads shifting, looking at me with this oh, face, you know, the, the draw, the, the, the draws that were, uh, the jaws that were dropping. And, and I'm thinking for myself, they don't know that I can dance. 
they're very impressed because because they had no idea that I could dance. So I had this this amazing mindset about um, about my confidence in my skills of dancing, and I was rocking it. So that presentation totally transformed me because back then I was kind of a low key like low key instructor. Nobody knew me. I was not really known. Nobody. Re I was not really popular. My classes were not popular. But after this presentation. I started to strut in the gym and I was like owning the place and and I acted like like I was the queen of the place. And soon enough, that confidence showed a lot of results. My classes were becoming packed. Everybody started to respect me and, and talk to me. I was outgoing. I had all this new confidence from this performance that we had done. Three weeks later, Somebody corners me in the change room and says, Natalie, I have to tell you, I'm really impressed by you because even though after what happened to you on that day, you reacted like it did not bother you at all. And I go, what? What do you mean? It did not bother me at all. I rocked it, you know, like, and she said, well, you, we started respecting you because you started acting like you own the place and that, and that nothing can affect you. And I'm like, what's going on? Well, Dr. Jacqueline, you know what happened? It, it turns out that I had a wardrobe malfunction on that day. My boob had been sticking out the whole time, the whole time during the performance. That's why people all looked at me and had this shocked look on their face. It's not because I was rocking it and because of my dance skills, but I didn't know. And instead, I, start, I, I had a very different mindset. I had made up a different story in my head. And it served me. And even though when I learned about this, I was shocked. And then I thought, well, it's too late. I'm the queen of the gym now. I, I, I mean, my classes are packed. Everybody respects me. So whatever. I had my boom, sh my boom showing, out, showing up all day. So it goes to show you how having a different mindset about something can have a huge, huge impact in in the results from something that's going to happen, even something that could have been the, the worst and most embarrassing moment of my life. Absolutely. You know what? I was looking at that picture of you and you were just, you looked so happy. You just looked like you were, <laughs> you were definitely rocking it and, and in great shape and everything. I love the fact that you shared how we can each look at things in different ways and, and take away something else. So, so you were the queen of the gym and, and people were taking your classes and showing you respect. So what would you say the key takeaways from that were for people who are, who are watching and they're thinking, okay, so she has this newfound confidence. How did that enable you to relate to people in a different way or a yeah. similar way? Exactly. So in, in, in that story, I did not know. So a really bad event had just happened to me. Um, I should have been embarrassed, but I did not know. So that was ignorance is bliss kind of uh, concept. Now, what we want to learn from this is that from then on, I, I realized how can we use this concept to our advantage because stuff will continue to happen in our life whether you know it or not you can choose to receive things as negative self-talk or you can choose to transform your language because somehow in our head and i and i often talk about um i always talk about the brain because the brain is the most powerful and complex structure of the universe but let's uh let's share a few things here first how the brain works and how our brain is so powerful. We have a logical mind and an unconscious mind. Um, we can choose to listen to the negative self-talk or we can choose to control it. And, and here's how it works. The logical mind, our logical mind can handle about five to nine pieces of information at once. That's, that's pretty cool. So we can multitask, right? So you can um, go grocery shopping at the same time that you're on a meeting on your phone. And at the same time, you grab a can of soup on special. With the other hand, you keep your kids from falling off the cart. And you still notice the guy in blue in the seafood department watching the girl in the meat department. So we notice all this at the same time. But have you ever noticed, let's say you're driving to a new address and 
the music is on, it's a beautiful day. And as you get closer to that new address, you start looking at the numbers in the houses. Have you ever caught yourself having to lower the volume on the radio, right? Because when you're, when you're driving and you've got the foot on the brake, the foot on the accelerator, there's the red light ahead, the kid that's about to cross the street, the lady that might cut you off, and then there's a dude in the car next to you winking at you, gross. So when you add looking at the numbers in the houses, the music becomes the one too many. So five to nine pieces of information is not that great after all. Living at a logical level is not that amazing because we can't really multitask. We've learned that 70% of our thoughts are negative. We have over 50 to 80,000 thoughts per day. So that's, that's the equivalent of 70% of that is like 31 negative thoughts every minute. This is, this is huge. <laughs> so, so what do we do with, with this negative self-talk when it happens? And we're going to co cover that right after. But before, I need to tell you about the unconscious mind. So we talked about the logical mind that's quite restricted, that you can't do many things at once. But the, the unconscious mind can handle 2.3 million pieces of information every second. So it's a huge, huge, huge difference. Um, and, and the way that I like to explain this is how we are all as um, entrepreneurs, as parents, as uh, workers, as friends, whatever it is that we're doing, things things seems to be a lot scarier than they are. And, and we are constantly afraid to step up for ourselves or, or, or maybe doubting our capacity and we're working hard and let's say you're creating a new business for yourself or you're trying to write a book or whatever it is that you're doing you would be okay i'm going to get up super early and i will do my meditation in the morning i will i need to do my exercise oh and i need to post on social media i need to have my own podcast too oh and i need to take my kids to school and sport in between my meetings oh and i also uh need to check up my finances because the cost of everything is going up right now and 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 we feel that we are always just trying to catch up and living at a logical level is very scary. It is like you're trying to go to New York City, but you are in an aircraft that is flying to Los Angeles. It, you can work as hard as you possibly can, but you're never going to get there if you stay down there in that aircraft. So that unconscious mind that I told you about that can handle 2.3 million pieces of information every second, that's the pilot of that aircraft. Because a lot of people say, oh, let me get off that aircraft. It's not going in the right direction. Well, instead, talk to the pilot and say, hey, bud, do you mind turning around? Because that's where I want to go. Imagine how much faster you're going to get there once the pilot is on board. So whenever there's events happening to you, you need to talk to your pilot and say, hey, wait a minute. This is where I want to go. So last time, um, and, and we can even potentially in the show notes, put the uh, link of the previous show where I gave you lots of examples um, on the uh, logical and the unconscious mind. But today, we're not going to talk about these parts of the brain. We're going to talk about the prefrontal cortex, which is another part of the brain that gets overwhelmed when, um, when we are receiving some bad information or some of that negative self-talk. So the main thing that we want to uh, to remember from that previous episode, and I mentioned that last time, uh, you can go back and have a look, but here's a quick recap, is that we all have this personal assistant in our head that is writing down everything that we say or think, and it makes it happen. So this personal assistant is this unconscious mind that can handle 2.3 million pieces of information every second. And we sometimes... Um, wake up in the morning and then we look at ourselves in the mirror and we say, oh, I'm so tired. I'm so stressed out. I think I'm getting weight. So then your personal assistant writes it down. Tired, stressed out, getting weight. I got this. Okay. So tired. What can I do for this? Oh, I know. I'm going to keep her awake all night. She's not going to be able to sleep. So she's going to be really tired in the morning. Check. Stressed out. Hmm. Oh, I know. I'm going to make her delete a very important appointment in her calendar. That's going to be stressful. Check. Gaining weight, gaining weight. Oh, I know. I'm going to find a chocolate bar or something deep fried for her to eat today. And if all fails, more wine tonight. Check. 
So that personal assistant is in your head, listening for all these thoughts and all the orders to put on their notepad and make it happen. So we have to be very, very careful what we tell our personal assistant. So how are we doing so far, uh, Dr. Jacqueline? For the, um, I'm not sure where we are with the time, and I think we have maybe a pause coming up soon before we talk about yes. the prefrontal cortex. Thank you so much. We're about to go to a break. I really appreciate you remembering that. That's fabulous. Okay, folks, please stay tuned. We're going to go for a break, and then we'll be right back. Thank you. The session that we had with BCAT was really entertaining and enlightening. We were able to put together some very specific steps that we as individuals can take and it was really fun to all come together and see sort of where we're going as a team and how we can all get there together. We had a tremendous experience with the BCAP partners. One of the challenges that we have as an organization is to make sure that we have the right people in the right chairs doing the right thing. To do that well, you have to have synergy. You can try to dream up ways to make sure that your group does that, or you can rely on experts. We would recommend BCAP partners to anybody who's looking to take their organization to the next level. Meet the modern learner. Like most of us, the modern learner is short on time, on the go, and wants to learn on their terms and device of choice. The key is to meet them whenever and wherever they may be. The solution? Best-in-class content served up by the Engagement Mobile Learning Platform, where the modern learner is at the center of the learning experience. For example, they can receive a text message that alerts them to a new learning module. They simply tap, watch, read and engage, or play a fun learning game. We transform your content into modules that are timely, accurate, academically rigorous, yet engaging and robust. Personality motivators are blended with modern adult learning principles to make it faster and more natural to absorb the content and have fun while learning. Our cutting edge platform offers something for everyone. It can be an immersive experience where learners explore and engage based on what's relevant to them in that moment, or they can follow a set curriculum, earning badges and tracking points toward a credit or goal, or they can dive deeper into high-value professional content relating to their topic of interest. It's binge learning at its best. All this along with an entire portfolio of real-time usable data and KPIs for stakeholders. Imagine, share up-to-the-minute news, enhance current curriculum, build knowledge banks, drive sales, and foster community in the push of a button. To learn more or see a demo, please contact support at engagement.com. Welcome back to USA Global TV and Radio. You're watching The Wise Ones, and I'm Dr. Jacqueline Kerbeck. Our guest today is a confidence expert, and she is really opening my eyes to things that I haven't really thought about, and I'm sure the same thing is happening to you. Let's get back to the show and learn more from Natalie Plamondon. Uh, Thomas, welcome. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, I have to say that 
I loved how uh, the ad that we just saw about the learning content is very timely uh, nowadays because everybody needs um, online courses, micro learning. Um, everybody needs to learn in a very short and adaptive way because everything is so fast. The world that we live in is going at light speed. And as fast as things are going right now, they will never be this slow again. So I feel that things are even going to accelerate even more. Uh, content is going to go even shorter and shorter. Um, and people need to really be engaged. Uh, it needs to be portable. They need to be able to do everything everywhere. And busy is the new black. Um, and it's it's a sad thing. We used to as a French person, I needed to learn English. And my first sentence that I learned was um, when people would ask me, how are you doing? I would say, fine, thank you. And you, that was the answer that I've learned. <laughs> but it changed dramatically. And in the past few years, when you ask somebody, how are you doing? They say, busy. How are you doing? Busy. How are you doing? Busy. Everybody's so busy. And, and you know what they're busy doing? They're busy worrying. And and it's it's a little um, it's a little sad that we spend so much of our amazing brain power worrying about stuff that is never going to happen, about stuff that have that has already happened, about miscellaneous things that don't don't even matter, and and we we worry so much. We are in constant prefrontal cortex overload, and. Um, the world is not going to go any slower. So we need your show, Dr. Jacqueline. <laughs> we need um, we need tools in order to to face the world that is accelerating and and not going to go any slower anytime soon. So let's talk a little bit about this this prefrontal cortex and and how we can deal with this. As um, as I mentioned. Most of our worrying and, and us being busy uh, doing is we're busy making up stories. So um, the problem is the, the stories we're making up are the wrong ones. We're making up stories that are scaring us. Let's say that I um, tell you about me being a speaker. I'm on a stage and somebody leaves the room while I'm speaking. I can I can decide that this person is just leaving because they're not interested in what I have to say. But really, I don't know why they're living, why, they're, what, why they are leaving the stage. I'm making up a story that it may be because they're not interested. So what I've decided to do is to make up a story that serves me because I'm making it up anyway. I don't know why they're leaving. The, the audience. So my number one response now, I've automated a few very specific responses because I've identified all the things that that used to make me uh, worry about something. And when somebody leaves the audience, they're going to pick up their daughter. They always are. They or they're going to pick up a friend or their parent. They they're always going to go pick up something, pick up somebody. So it makes me. Um, a lot more resourceful while I'm on the stage. Or if somebody has their arms crossed like this and they're sitting like this in front of me, I know that there's the whole body language. That it means that somebody's close to your message. But will that help me while I'm on stage to think to myself that, that the crowd is really bad that day? Instead, I'm going to say they're cold. So whenever somebody's like this in the audience, I say, it's got to be really cold. That person is 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 cold, and then they're they're going like this because they're cold. Because that puts me in a resourceful way, so that I can up up my game, so that I can find the funniest things that I have, or so that I find ways to engage better. So we need to make up stories that that serve us all the time, because most times the stories that we make up are not the right one. Like 40% of the things that we worry about will never happen. <laughs> we, we think that what if this happened? What if that happens? What if I create an online course and nobody buys it? What if 
and and we're we're making up stories all the time. And remember my intro story when I talked to you about the fact that I had made up a total different story about this event and it had a very different impact on my life. And and I actually became um, a few years later the fitness instructor of the year for Canada. So that really, really propelled me to, to the top of my game in the industry. And it could have had a very different impact if I had made up a different story in my head. So 40% of what we worry about will never happen. 30% of what we worry about has already happened. It's done. It's over. So we we cannot use our prefrontal cortex to worry about things that are done and over. We need to move on. We need to figure out what we have learned. So your powerful emotions, these anger, fear, hurt, sadness, guilt, and, and mainly fear right now as, as we're moving towards a lot of unknowns. There's a lot of things that are going on everywhere around the world, and we don't know what's going to happen. Stocks are dropping. Our weight <laughs> is, is increasing. <laughs> so uh, that's not a good combination. And we, we're we getting less healthy, more in debt, uh, more fearful about the future. So that all causes a lot of powerful emotions. You have to see these emotions as delivery trucks. So it's like every single time that you're feeling overwhelmed or you're feeling afraid or sad or guilty or whatever you are feeling uncomfortable, you see this as a delivery truck in your driveway. That's a powerful emotion. That's something that is happening and its only purpose is to give you a package. But the problem is we don't take the time to open up the package because we don't have time for this because, oh, you're in front of your client. So then you smile and everything is good. Or you're recording a show. So uh, Dr. Jacqueline, you're, very, you're a public figure. So uh, you're constantly surrounded by people. So then you're smiling and then you say, everything is okay. Everything is good. Oh yeah. And then you go home and then your kids are asking, is everything okay, mommy? Oh yeah. Everything's fine. Everything's good. So we don't have time to open the package and and we don't have time to process that emotion. And what we don't know about these emotions is that they're only designed to last 30 to 90 seconds. That's it. An emotion loop should only last 30 to 90 seconds, and then we could exit the loop. That's that's what it's designed for. And you see that in children, you know, like infants, they're crying, and then and then Five, five seconds later, they're happy again, and then they're temper tantrum, and then they're happy again, because emotions only last 30 to 90 seconds in the prefrontal cortex, and then we exit the loop. But because sometimes we don't pick up the package, the truck stays in the driveway, and it idles, and then another truck comes in, and another truck comes in, and another one, and another one, and eventually, there's so many trucks in your driveway that you can't get out anymore, and you're stuck, and that's when there's depression, that's where there's anxiety, that's where there's chronic pain uh, that that get results uh, resulted from that, so powerful emotion are really, really um, uh, important to manage right away, and the way to do that is to ask yourself, okay, I'm receiving a package. Um, I should open it. And in order to be willing to open it, we need to understand that the brain does not know the difference between anxiety and excitement. So if you decide that it's a bad thing, that this emotion you're feeling is bad, then your body will shoot 1400 chemical through your bloodstream. And like cortisol, and we're not very resourceful when we're filled with cortisol. But if you decide that it's excitement, then you will receive some good feel good chemicals through your bloodstream, like oxytocin, dopamine, endorphin, serotonin, every one of them is different depending on if you're moving, if you're witnessing something, if you're with other people, but they, they all have a reason to, to get um, into your bloodstream. But bottom line is they are feel good chemicals that will put you in a resourceful mode so that you can open the door, receive your package, and 90 seconds later, you'll be out of that emotion. Does that, um, does that make sense? Yes, that definitely makes sense. And I thought that was very interesting what you shared about the lifetime span of an emotion. And yet I think what happens is we hold on to that emotion strong. Like I'm not letting go of this anger. 
And then that anger and the inability to let it go turns into other things. And then it affects our health, like what you were talking about. Absolutely. And we start, it starts showing up everywhere because the first time we've experienced any of these emotion was between the age of zero and seven. Um, so let's say we don't need to have been in a house on fire to experience anger. Uh, maybe your sibling stole your favorite doll. <laughs> That's that. Mm -hmm. And and you were angry. So then you're maybe one year old, two years old and your temper tantrum and your unconscious mind comes to the rescue and says, don't worry about it, Jacqueline. I'm just going to take this and put it over here. And it moves it into a different part of the brain so that it frees up your prefrontal cortex. And it creates a, a thread of anger. And every single time you'll be angry in your life, it's going to add on a pearl. So instead of going through one loop, the next time you'll go to two. And then as you add on the pearls, you go to three, four, five loops. And some people get, get like exactly what you said, they get stuck in that loop for years. I've helped some people who had been stuck in their loop for so many years, um, even, even 20 years later for something that happened to them in their childhood. And, and it's just the way it is. Now, in order to remove these pearls, Sometimes what people do is they would talk about their problems with a friend. So you go for coffee, you talk about this pearl, this thing that was added onto your necklace. And by talking about it, somehow they feel better temporarily because that pearl gets removed from the necklace, the necklace gets shorter. But the problem is, as they're talking about it with their friend, the... <laughs> the brain thinks that it's happening again because it reshoots another set of 1400 chemical every time you talk about it. And, and we become really, really good at telling our horror stories, right? Oh my gosh. And, and you, you're expecting like this crowd of people with, with your hand on your forehead saying, you have no idea what happened to me on the, this morning on my way to work. There's this guy that cut me off. And then at the same time, I was receiving a phone call from my doctor because my brother has cancer and my dog just died and this and that. And, and we feel like there's so many things that are happening to us and we keep telling the whole world about it. And every time we talk about it, we add on another pearl and another one and another one. And the people we're telling the story to, their brain does not know it's not happening to them. So we're polluting them with 1400 chemicals every time we tell them our horror stories because their brain thinks it's happening to them. That's why we, we cry when we watch This Is Us or, or we're afraid in our living room when we watch a horror movie and we're in our pajamas on our living room, on our couch. It's safe. There's no vampires. We know it doesn't exist, but the brain doesn't know that. So it, it puts us into this, this prefrontal cortex overload and it sends cortisol and a whole, all kinds of different chemicals through our bloodstream, even though that was not our intent. All we wanted to was talk about something with someone so that it will make us feel better. But what we need to do is to look for the learnings. That's the only question you want to ask yourself is, what am I learning? What's in the truck? There's a truck in my driveway. And if you want to brainstorm with a friend, tell them, hey, listen up. I'm feeling very uncomfortable right now. There's a situation that's going on and I'm trying to find my learning. What am I learning from this? In a month from now, how will I talk about this? What's my silver lining? How am I growing from this? What a, how am I becoming better? And then you can even feel the emotion and say, oh, I'm so uncomfortable. This is going on. I don't know. Whew, I don't know how I'm going to get out of this. Wait a minute. Oh, that means there's a truck in my driveway. Ooh, I'm going to learn something. I'm receiving a package. What's my gift? Okay. I'm growing. I'm getting to the next step of my of my journey. So what am I learning? So this is your number one question. You always want to ask yourself for anything that happens to you. What is your positive learning? There is always something that you are learning. And that's your number one question you want to ask yourself. I absolutely love these visuals and the analogies that you're making because people can, can 
take it home with them. And, and you can, I'm a visual learner, so I can see that truck and relate that to the gift and looking at it a totally different way. A question I have for you, uh, some people are more, I'm going to say awakened than other people. Some people are more in tune with what's going on. And for some people, going back in the past is something they love to do. They love to tell you, remember this, remember, and you already addressed it. It's already, you had it, you had your pearls, right? And you took them off the necklace and now they want to bring it up again. That happens a lot in relationships that people start butting heads. What are your thoughts about what we can do to break this pattern? So there's, um, there's always a learning that is missing when, um, when we don't let go of an emotion. So if an event happened a long time ago, um, it's because th there, there are some things we can do ourselves. There are some questions you can ask yourself. Um, that that two-step technique that I taught last time, um, I can maybe do a quick uh, revision very, very quickly of it. So the two-step technique starts with talking about it in the past. So let's say in a, in a relationship you were saying and you feel like you're um, not heard or you feel that your spouse is not um, paying attention to you or you feel that uh, what would be the main uh, bad conversations that uh, that we would have with a spouse is that day that they didn't get our back or uh, they, they were not supportive or whatever. So what we say is when you hear yourself say, my spouse doesn't support me. This is a negative self-talk. And it's something that your brain generalized because our brain has um, shortcut ways that personal assistant tries to be very efficient and likes to compartmentalize things in small little boxes. And what it would do is if something happened once or twice, then the brain will say, I will generalize this and say that it's always like this all blondes are having more fun <laughs> you know it, it generalized things or all teenage employees are not reliable right or all millennials are like this or it's it's always going to be the case my spouse will never have my back from now on and that's that's how we condition ourselves but it's not true the brain is playing tricks on us so what we can do here is if you hear some negative self-talk like that, like, oh, my spouse is not supportive. Then you say, I used to think that my spouse was not supportive. Just like if you hear yourself say, um, oh, I'm so stressed out all the time. Wait, I used to think that I was stressed out all the time because we remember our personal assistant. That's writing down everything that we say or think. So if you say, I'm so stressed out all the time, your personal assistant will write it down. But if you do a an affirmation that is completely the opposite because that's what people do it's very in to do affirmations but uh, the problem is affirmations don't work if you don't believe them like if if you say uh when you are in a super stressful situation and you put your hands on your hips and you say i am calm it's not gonna work right or if i work with the think yourself thin program with people that are in deep deep uh overweight uh problems or the Think Yourself Wealthy program, people are in financial struggles. It's not going to work for me to say, okay, every morning you're going to look at yourself in the mirror and you're going to say, I am thin or I am rich. It doesn't work because the brain's like, oh, she's not talking to me. I don't have this on my list. Oh, she must be watching a vampire movie. Vampires don't exist. I'm not writing this down. So by using that two-step technique, the first step is to say, I used to think that I was stressed out all the time. So now your personal assistant goes, ah, Stressed out. I have this on my list right here. You're talking to me. Now, why are we talking about this in the past? Are we done with this? So that's when you follow up with step two and you say, now I'm willing to learn. So you add a progressive statement. The progressive statement starts with, I'm in the process of, or I'm in, I'm willing to learn. I used to think I was stressed out all the time. Now I'm willing to learn how to change that. I'm willing to build a calmer life for myself or a balanced life. I used to think my spouse was not supporting me. Now I'm willing to work on this. Now I'm in the process of having better conversation with my spouse. Now I'm willing to speak up. Now I'm in the process of 
um, finding what is my positive learning? What was that powerful emotion? What is that gift that I have that, that I'm supposed to be learning? right? So these are all questions that we can ask ourselves. So these are all tools that, that I provide um, audiences around the world and everything. But I still do a lot of one-on-one -on -one with clients because like you said, Dr. Jacqueline, why is it that people get stuck with things that happened years and years ago? It's because some events were so powerful that they created a trauma and when we're talking about trauma, we're talking about something a little bit more deep. So these tools that I'm that I'm giving you, the two-step technique, the what am I learning, or or these powerful questions that you can ask, like uh, will freaking out help, or um, uh, something when 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 something happens, you can ask yourself, um, is this um, really bad, or is it too soon to know? right? Because very often we, we freak out and it's, it's way too soon. Do I have enough information to freak out? So those are great tools. But if I was a dentist, these are like, I'm giving you a toothbrush. I'm giving you floss. I'm giving you mouthwash. But if you have cavities, if you've experienced trauma, that's when you need the dentist because it's not by brushing your your cavity very very well with a toothbrush that the cavity is going to go away you need a dentist with specific tools and some of the tools that i use with my clients have like 89 steps like for trauma release for ptsd very specifically um and and i've helped uh, this morning i was just finishing a round of the rtm protocol with a woman who had been abused um, repetitively in in her 15 to 20 years old uh, part of her life. She's in her 40s now, and she has learned to live with this. She she thought of it as if it was a condition, as if it was something that she would have to live with with the rest of her life. And after doing our, it's just a five hour process. It's not that long compared to the 20 years she's been carrying this. But she told me this morning, she said, oh, my gosh, it's I it's so different um, because we were at the third round already. We do three rounds in a row um, and with a week in between in her case. And and already in, in the past three weeks, she's been feeling completely different. And she said, I thought that I would have had to carry this all my life, that her tooth would be hurting for the rest of her life. And she just had to eat on the other side of her mouth. Well, that's not true. We don't have to live with this. So the the reason, uh, and, and this is when I'm really answering the question that you ask is why is this? It's because memories are triggering physiological responses. So it's, it's a neurobiological response in your body. Even though she had done a lot of talking work and, and a lot of, of counseling over the events from her childhood, there was still a biological response. Every time she would have intercourse with, with her very nice boyfriend of today, um, her body would tense up because it's a biological response. So by disconnecting the memory from the emotion so that you can talk about it as if, oh, I just ran out of milk. So, so instead of being a traumatic event, it becomes just an event that there's no emotional connection that is connected to it so that you require a little bit more of um of of a process if you'd like with specific tools uh, but there are lots of things that you can do on your own like the two-step technique like these powerful questions that you can ask yourself like uh, a few of them from Brene Brown uh, which she is the the author of um, those two questions that I said uh, will freaking out help? <laughs> and do I have enough information to freak out? So she came up with these two questions, which are very, very useful because you can always ask these questions to yourself. Uh, but sometimes you just need that extra la layer um, for PTSD. For We work with army vets. We have now 20 uh, new people that are trained in Ukraine to help people going through what's going on over there to immediately catch all the trauma that they're going through and immediately disconnect the emotional piece from the event that are happening there. So this is all great news. Um, for the uh, the the trauma uh, industry. 
You're doing such important and meaningful work. A question I have for you as we come to the end of the show already is uh, for you and for your team, when you are working with people who are highly emotional or their emotions are locked away and uh, you're doing this work, how do you keep yourself from getting emotional or out of control when you're when you're hearing heart wrenching stories uh, or stories of war? Exactly. That is um, that is in the process. Um, like I like I mentioned to you, um, if you go for coffee with a friend and you tell them your horror stories, they shoot fourteen hundred chemicals to their bloodstream and they think it's happening to them as well. That's what I do for a living. I have zero interest in hearing nobody's stories, and I don't hear them. That's the beauty of these processes. We don't need to relive anything at all, ever. It's not necessary. All we do is we go straight to the learning. We don't need to relive. I don't like sometimes because I do uh, a lot of work with male as well, uh, clients, and they don't like to open their heart, their heart and tell people what happened. They don't want to tell me. They, and sometimes I don't even know what happened. And it doesn't matter. It works anyway because it's a it's a series of visualization that they do in their head by themselves while I just guide them through it. We look for the learnings together, and and different different processes have different um, different ways of working. But I never ever tell somebody so tell me in details what happened ever because I don't want to hear it. I don't want to pollute myself. And, and I definitely don't want them to relive it because I don't want them to reshoot 1,400 chemicals to their bloodstream just because they came to see me. They'll feel a lot worse after seeing me than, than before. So it's a very refreshing uh, process. And that's why probably my calendar is, is so booked because it, it's, it's an easy process. We don't relive anything. There's no Kleenex box in my office and a couch where people lay down and cry. That doesn't happen. <laughs> it doesn't happen. How refreshing. I love that because to your point, if you are working with people on a regular basis and you take all of that in, you are going to get sick. Are you kidding me? Right? Exactly. Exactly. So I know you have two offers for our audience. One is for them to schedule in your calendar. And I have that here. Let's pull that up. Tell us more about yep. this, please. Yeah, so um, I'm happy to to have a virtual coffee with uh, anyone from the audience. So thank yourself.com slash schedule. So you will choose the free 15 minute virtual coffee. There's a lot we can do in 15 minutes. Uh, we can identify the cavities. Uh, we can figure out what could potentially have been holding you back. That procrastination or that I don't understand why, but I feel stuck and and I know what to do, but I just don't do it. Why am I not doing it? I know what I should be doing. Doing. Well, maybe there's something that needs to be identified and then very often 15 minutes is enough. So feel free to book a uh, virtual coffee with me. So go to thinkyourself.com slash schedule uh, to book a time. Thank you so much. And you also have a confidence guide. That's right. So if you go to thinkyourself.com slash confidence guide gives you the 15 keys for confidence working with the six layers of the brain. So we do have to reprogram six layers uh, of our self in order to be able to move forward. So that confidence guide is asking you specific questions for these six layers. And it also uh, provides you with the two-step technique that I mentioned a little bit earlier. So then you'll have it by writing. So you can download this for free. Thinkyourself.com slash confidence guide. Thank you very much. And while I have you there, I'm going to put up your other banner. If you can share with our audience who's unable to read the banner and people who are on the radio, just Again, your website, please. Yes, absolutely. So you can um, reach me at thinkyourself.com uh, or you can reach me at um, natalie at thinkyourself.com is my email address on social media, um, Think Yourself Academy or Natalie Plamondon Thomas. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to connecting with you on uh, all the social platforms or uh, directly on my website. Thank you very much, Natalie. I really enjoyed seeing you again, and I learned some new things as well. You know, I interview people all the time, and 
uh, sometimes I find myself getting emotionally wrapped up in what they're saying, and then I feel horrible, and then I have to keep doing the show. So <laughs> I'm going to take what you said to heart. You. Yes. That's awesome. That's Definitely. awesome. Thank you so much. You're such a great host. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me. And then um, thank you. looking forward to staying in touch. Perfect. And I'd love to see you on the business show as well. Yes, absolutely. All right. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day and have a good weekend. Thank you. You too. Thank you. Bye for now. Thank you to each and every one of you who watch our shows and who listen to our shows. I know the majority of people actually watch and listen later on our radio channels. We have our shows are on 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Sometimes I hear my own voice and I'm like, oh, not me again. <laughs> But hopefully you'll enjoy hearing from our co-hosts and all of our guests. You can go over to TuneIn Radio or MyTuner Radio, and you can listen to us 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Okay, just a few quick announcements I want to make before we close out. So we do have a new show coming. This show is called The Amazing Adventures of Lady Ella, The Listening Mentor, the TV and radio show. So for those of you who aren't aware, I am in the process of writing my first book in this book series for children. And each of the characters here on the book cover represents a real person. So these people, these characters, I'm sorry, are actually elevated listeners. People have gotten certified by me as listening at an elevated level. And our story is to help teach children and their parents how to listen. And in addition to learning how to listen, they also learn the message of not judging. So on the one side, we see the cow. The cow's name is Belle, and she represents my sister, actually, Debbie Wilson, who signed up to be the, and she picked the cow. She designed the cow. She named the cow. And I'm the ladybug, Lady Ella. Ella is actually my nine-month, uh, nine-month-old a great niece. And the owl is the main character of the story. That's Caroline Heward. She is in London. And so you see the farm animal, which is the cow, and the rest of the animals are the forest animals. And the cow's afraid of the forest animals. And the forest animals are hurt because the cow doesn't want to be friends with them because she's afraid. So the children learn lessons. And this show is only for the people who are on the book cover. So each week we will have a full size version of let's say the orangutan and we will have the uh, each of our real life people who drew and, and designed the animal to be on the show sharing about the animal's listening skills. So please do join us for that. Also, if you missed it yesterday, we have a woman's prerogative. This is a show for women, by women, about women. And we discuss women's topics. We have a panel of women, but you can be a guest. If you're interested, we talk about all kinds of topics. Some of them are controversial, but everyone must treat each other with respect. And there is no judging of another person's thoughts about the issue. And finally, I have uh, another new opportunity for people to get involved. It's with our game show, Who's Listening Game Show. And this is for our elevated listening team. And you may say to yourself, why does she keep talking about elevated listening? Because that's my passion. When I'm not on this platform, <clears throat> excuse me, I am coaching people how to listen at an elevated level. And that means listening without judging, without interrupting without providing a solution and without stage hogging. Stage hogging is when someone's sharing their story, whatever it might be, and you take over because your story is so much better. What happened to you is so much more important, but it's really not, it's not. And what we're doing is we are coming to this global community where we are at odds with each other all the time. And the root of it is because we're not listening. So I encourage everyone to take the course that I'm offering. I have a special rate. Let me find my graphic. I have a special rate for the July 4th week. Of course, I can never find it. Here it is. The power of listening. It's $49 right now. It's a two and a half hour course. Once you take the course, you will take a seven question quiz and then I certify you. And once you're certified, I 
tell everyone who watches or listens that you listen at an elevated level. So imagine how good that would be for your business when people know that you actually took the time to learn how to listen. And as business owners, that's one thing I see all the time. We don't listen to our clients. We cut them off. This is my business. I know what I'm doing. Oh, you don't like my product? Oh, okay, bye. See you later. I'll go find someone else. So if you're interested in learning how to listen at an elevated level, I'll put up the link. You can actually go over to the platform. Everything is automated. And, and I would love to welcome you and have you as part of our team. Here's the link. It's Dr. Jacqueline, D-R-J-A-C-A-L-Y-N dot dot com. All right. That's all I have for now. I look forward to seeing you again tomorrow. If you're over on our YouTube channel, USA Global TV, please do subscribe. We'd love to have you. I am always in shock. I check the numbers and it's 90 plus percent men watching on the YouTube channel. I don't know what that means, guys, but ladies, are you in the house? Can you please go over to YouTube and subscribe? We want to have you counted. All right. Thanks again. Enjoy the rest of your day. We'll be back tomorrow with a full load of broadcasts all day live streaming. Thanks again. Thank you, Natalie. Thank you. Bye.